couple of quick announcements. I know this has been an ever-changing thing, but once again, there's another change when it comes to the women's retreat. The 2021 Women's Retreat dates have been changed once again. The new dates are August 20th through the 22nd. You know, it's easy to say, oh, forget it, we'll go next year. But we believe that that time where you've gathered together as sisters is important. Amen. And so we're continuing to fight the good fight of faith. We're believing that that's going to be the final change, amen? amen. This obviously is going to be the final change to keep on throwing hurdles and barriers and and he's the God of the breakthrough. So we're believing for a breakthrough. We're believing that that yeah, is going to yeah. be the final date change. Yeah. Also, we've got the over the top. For those of you that aren't familiar, every year we have our convention here. It's the first week in August. And, and what we do is we have the over the top fund. And it's, it's a scenario where we can turn our trash into cash. We take all our recyclables and, and we bring them to the church. And Brother Jim over here will take them and get them recycled. And, and ultimately what happens is through our recycling and, and, and brothers and sisters also filling out on their tithe envelope over the top, we reach that goal. And the goal is to have our, our convention paid for, the entire conference paid for. Our goal to reach is $11,000. We're right now, uh, so far we've raised $7,052. So we're getting close. First week in August, we can do it. Instead of throwing that soda can or that bottle of water in the trash can, throw it in the bag, set it aside, bring it to church. Yeah. Also, when it comes to our convention, we're going to need servers in the kitchen to help. Brother Abraham, he's the person that you want to talk to if you're willing to help and serve in any capacity. And, and just, yes, yes. Thank you. Yes. So when it comes down to serving and helping in the kitchen, we have an event coming up. It's the Catechism Banquet. It's Saturday, June 5th. And so there's an opportunity this next month, June 5th, to serve. To serve in the House of Lords. So if you're interested in serving in the kitchen or helping for the Catechism Banquet, it'll be June the 5th at 6 p.m. We have Abraham's number if you're interested in that. Come talk to me after the service. I'll give that to you. Servers and kitchen help for the Catechism Banquet, and we will also need them for our convention week as well. I believe we have some other things going on today. Is that correct or no? Okay, Brother Johnny, I'm gonna invite you over this time, sir. Challenge the body like the you can. Talk about the women change day. Now look at some women there. Hey, it went down. Like, what's the problem? <laughs> women, are you complaining? Have you ever complained about something? I know the women are not complaining, but the husband are. <laughs> Tell the truth. Brothers, help me out. You're complaining. I complain. I complain so much. I asked my wife if I want a motorcycle. She said, wait. Lady, it's summertime. I said, I need a seat. Dude. It's summertime. I gotta go to the river. I need my own seat. She said, Wait. I said, Wait for what? I said, I need a new truck. She said, Wait. I don't know what else to do. I said, I lost weight. I need new wardrobe. I need new clothes. She said, Wait. Wait. So that's my complaint. So help me out. If you see your teller, go ahead and buy me something. <laughs> Last night, I couldn't go to sleep. God keep waking me up, so that's my complaint. I say, uh, why you keep waking me up? Uh, can you wait in the morning? We can talk. But she keep waking me up. So I woke up last night, and he came in Jeremiah. Would you please, uh, somebody? Give me Jeremiah. Is it 12-5? I was in the middle of my sleep, I hold my phone, it's too bright for my eyes, so I, I face the phone down to the Bible, and I open to Jeremiah. There you go, that's the scripture. That's the one he gave me. Well, that has run with the footmen. And they have worried me. Then that what? Can't stop content with horses. That's the part he gave me. Because I, I complain all the time. And he said, how can I run with the footmen? 
that worries me, that worn me out, that beat me, that defeat me. So I cannot run with the footman. The footman, it, back in the days, he's talking about today's infantry, the people that go before the horses. Today we have big tanks and airplanes, and, and I'm speaking about the military. Footmen are infantry that go before. But if you can't beat or compete with the footmen, how can we contend? How can we compete with the horses? The horses are strong, faster. How can we? If we're crying about a little thing, spill milk. My message is to you this morning. My assignment is to tell you, and me, of course, to suck it up. I say, what? <laughs> me? Cry, baby? Stop crying about little things. Nathan mentioned about the convention coming up. We cry about little money, we gotta keep up with our time. Come on, church, we've been doing this over what, 50 years? There's nothing, nothing but a spill milk. Nothing. Nothing but a spill milk. How can we contend with horses? But then God gave me the revelation at the last minute. I was falling asleep. See, how can you contend with horses? Here it is. It's okay if you shout and run around. It's all good. I allow you to. But don't run too crazy because you'll pay the fine. We had Michael Lawrence in the house. Yeah. Amen, amen. And also, I got two strong men sitting way back there. Too strong, very strong. We leave weights yesterday, we went to the beach and run and everything. But they're strong. They're stronger than me though. Here's what God said. How can you run with horses? You can't. The horses are stronger. But he said, I can give you the ability, I can give you strength, I can give you power. I can give you the anointing to do things that you cannot do on your own. That's how you beat the horses. Run with the horses. The horses are coming. The horses are coming. The horses are coming. Let me keep it in elementary terms. Our challenge that we face right now is a preparation for greater challenges to come. The horses are coming. The horses are coming. Church, get your tithe, get your offering, get over the top. Get all those three things in your hand and come around. Let's bless the Lord. The horses are coming. Come around, church. Come around. Let's bless the Lord.
Lord, we turn over to you our issue, our problems, our finance, our heart, and our mind. Turn them over to you, our life, our complaints. Lord, we thank you for who you are. For you are the God that heal and deliver your people and set us free. And Lord, for those who need a touch from you, reveal yourself. Only you can. Those who need a touch in their body, in their relationship, in their finance, in their mind, in their heart, Lord, help them. We thank you, Father God, for the offering that came, Father God, we pray multiplication upon it to meet every need. We also pray for our brothers and sisters who tripped away. The cry of our heart, Lord, you draw them back. Those who need to be saved. Those who need miracles, Lord, and answers, deliverance, reveal yourself. And we give you honor, we give you glory. We thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Maybe sit in the house of the Lord. That could be baby dedications. Yes, sir. baby dedication this morning and it's wonderful to uh, see all the babies that are born into the kingdom of God. I think COVID produced a lot of kingdom kids. <laughs> you know, when you dedicate a child to the Lord, you're giving that baby back to God. God gives us children for a season and uh, while we have them, it's always good uh, to dedicate them, give them back to the Lord. Uh, you can put the graphic up, Cheryl, and, uh, you know, when you give a baby back to God, uh, it's just uh, asking God to protect that child till that child comes to the age of accountability. And nobody knows the uh, age of accountability, but it's different for different people. And in the scriptures, it's uh, considered around 13 years of age when a person can confess the Lord as their Savior and choose Him uh, to be the God of their life. And so uh, this is a time where parents promise to uh, raise that child in the fear and admonition of the Lord. They promise God that as you overshadow my child and give us peace and blessing, that we will indeed uh, serve you and uh, let our child be a part of the kingdom of God and involved in every area. So we're going to, this morning, dedicate Amariah uh, Rami Cedarholm. And as the family comes, we're going to give her back to the Lord and ask the Lord just to touch her and uh, overshadow her. And we thank God for the Cedarholm family. Amen? Amen. And uh, this is uh, Stan's daughter's uh, child. And we appreciate that uh, even though Debbie's not here physically, she is here spiritually. Amen. And it wasn't long ago when Stan and Debbie stood on this platform and lifted up Christy to the Lord. And God has been a part of Christy's life ever since she was born. And she knows that this godly heritage has been given to her and she wants to pass it down to her child. Isn't that beautiful? And so we're going to uh, uh, dedicate her, uh, Mariah. She has a beautiful dress on this morning. And, and this dress, I want to show her to you. Is she not beautiful? She's dressed up like a Christian. You see, her color is purple and white. And purple represents royalty. How many know she's a child of the living God? Yeah. Child of the King of Kings. Amen? She's God's kid. She's royalty to the Lord. And she's wearing white, which means purity, righteousness. And we know that she is pure and righteous in the sight of God. And uh, we just love her so much. And she's looking for her mom. Where's my mom? Where's my mom? Let me show her to the uh, platform ministry. Amariah. 
Amariah Robbie. She's gorgeous. Look at her. Isn't she beautiful? Amen. Okay, Mama, are you ready? Come over here. These are the godparents. Praise the Lord. Alexander Emmanuel. Now, I'm going to give you your baby. Now, it's wonderful to be godparents because you know what that means. If anything, God forbid, would ever happen that you step up and take this baby. Isn't that beautiful? But I think you'd have to kill Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm <old. laughs> But it means that you'll be there for a baby. And so we want to pray for you this morning that God uh, will honor you for taking this wonderful position of loving this baby and being there for her. Can we pray for you? All right. Heavenly Father, we just lay hands on this wonderful couple right now, God. They have decided to be godparents to Amariah, Lord. And what a blessing it is for them to be a part of her life in such a wonderful way. I thank you for them, and I thank you for their love for Christy and this family. Lord, you put that love in their hearts. And Lord, because of that love in their hearts for this family, they've said what an honor it is to be godparents of your child. That of all the people you've chosen, you've chosen us. And we don't take it lightly, but we will pray for her and love her, comfort her and strengthen her whenever we can. So now, Lord, we bless them, we anoint them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, bless this couple, Lord, and meet their every need. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, Mom, come over here in the center. Now, this baby is truly a gift from God. Mm, yes, you are, Mom. Oh, wow. So I want you to, uh, I want you just to lift her up, Christy, if you can. And I want you just to pray this prayer uh, as you lift her up. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. For my lovely daughter. For my lovely daughter. She is truly a gift from heaven. She is truly a gift from heaven. And Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus. I give her to you today. I give her to you today. Oh, to overshadow her. To overshadow her. And protect her. And protect her. All the days of her life. All the days of her life. And now, Lord. And now, Lord. As I give her to you. As I give her to you. I know. I know. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. That she has been a gift to me. She has been a gift to me. I will treasure her. I will treasure her. And raise her. And raise her. To always love you. To always love you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ministry, let's lay our hands on her. Brother Richard, you want to pray over this baby as we dedicate her. Father, right now as the ministry lays hands of blessing upon this young child. Lord, you know that she's dedicated to you and the principles of the kingdom. Lord, we ask now that you would just consecrate this time. Bless her. Bless her family, Lord. Bless those around her. Cause her to have perfect health, Lord, all the days of her life. Lord, you be a part of her life, Lord, and you will put angels around about her. Lord, we give her to you right now in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. For surely I have given you a gift and a treasure, saith the Lord. And you will love her. And you will not only love her, but you'll give her wonderful things that will cause her in life to know my blessing and my goodness. So daughter, love her. Protect her. Pray for her. Oh, he's always, always give her your love. For this baby will not only know your love for her, but this baby will know my love through your love. So this day I come to bless you and to let you know that everything written against you has been erased by my precious blood. You are forgiven and you are cleansed and you will no longer allow the enemy to torment you. For today I set you free, daughter, free to express my love to others. The way and the journey that you walked upon has not been an easy walk. It's been very difficult. But daughter, all through your journey, you have known me and loved me. For I remember the day, daughter, when your mother gave you to me. 
and I blessed you with blessings. And those blessings in your generation shall pass on to the next generation. They will love me. They will serve me. So today I come to bless you and give you peace and comfort. I am going to do those things that you cry out for. I've heard the cries upon the pillow. And I want to declare to you, daughter, it's an opportunity for you to witness and to share your faith with them. There are many that don't know me. And you will tell them about me. And you will share my love with them. And they, too, will embrace the truths of your God. This day is a very special day for you. And as you have planned this day, you will know my favor and blessing upon this very day. Say it for Hallelujah, Father, we thank you for Christy, and we thank you for this baby, and all that you're going to do for them. She's going to walk under the canopy of your provision. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. We're going to have a family photo, are we? Yeah, of course. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good.
for he is the God of the harvest. Amen? And uh, the city at that time of Jerusalem was overflowing with people all around the world speaking all kinds of languages. And they were there having parties and celebrations because of the great harvest. Now we know that uh, Pentecost is 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So 50 days ago, we celebrated Easter. Did you know that? And we celebrated a risen Christ. And uh, Jesus walked after his resurrection 40 days. 40 days he spoke to all of his followers and uh, they began to uh, ask him questions and he began to tell them of the end time and what times would be like. And Jesus told them, tarry in Jerusalem. Go into Jerusalem and wait and tarry and pray because I'm going to give you the comforter which is the Holy Spirit. And Jesus ascended and went into heaven. So they went into Jerusalem and for 10 days they were in an upper room. And they were praying. Now there was thousands of people that followed Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us not only were there thousands, there were the 70, there were the 12, there were the 3, and there were the 1. And that speaks to us uh, as, our, as we have a relationship with God. Is he number 1 in your life? Is he maybe three, maybe 12, maybe 70, maybe a thousand? He's one of a thousand that you think of. But I want to say to you today, we need to make Jesus Christ number one. Yes. Amen? And so they tarried 10 days, and after the 10 days, the Holy Spirit fell on those 120 from all different walks of life, and the Spirit of God fell on them, and the church was born. So Pentecost is a great celebration. It's a time for us to remember that the church of Jesus Christ was birthed. Amen? And would you turn with me in your Bibles to Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 11, and we're going to read about Pentecost. Now it says in verse 1, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in what? One place. Now God wants us to be in one accord. And one place. Isn't it amazing when we all get together in one accord in one place, something exciting happens. Doesn't it? And so Pentecost had come. The day was fully come. They, they gathered together the 120. And notice in verse 2 what happened. The Bible said, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the place where they were sitting. The 120 praying and asking for the comfort of the Holy Spirit to come. And as they're in that upper room, there was a sound of the wind. How you know in scriptures, wind represents the Holy Spirit? I want to say to you, there's a sound of wind. There's a sound of the Holy Spirit blowing upon the churches today. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues of fire, and it sat upon all of them. And they were all, what does it say? They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Remember, it's the Feast of Harvest. It's Pentecost naturally. And spiritually, Pentecost was going to be birthed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Naturally, there was a harvest going on, but spiritually, there's a harvest that's going on. How I many know the spiritual is far greater than the natural? Amen. Amen? And it tells us that in verse 6, it was noised abroad. And it says, multitudes came together. They were confounded. Why were all the people confounded? Because what does it say in your scriptures? Because they heard them speak in their own language. Notice verse 7, they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, all these which speak are Galileans, uneducated people. And now we hear every man in our own language wherein we were born. Notice dropping down to verse 11, it says they speak in our tongue about the wonderful works of God. We need to speak of the wonderful works of God. Amen? Last Sunday was Healing Sunday. We laid hands on the sick people. God healed. 
I've been uh, getting phone calls of people coming into my office, Myrtle busted in, and she said, man, God touched me. I'll tell you what, I was slain in the Holy Spirit, and I went, wow, that is powerful. I want to say to you, we need the power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Yeah, yeah. And the Holy Spirit brings healing today. Now, what they experienced in Acts chapter 2 is for you and I to experience today. A lot of faiths and doctrines and churches teach and preach that the Holy Ghost was only in Acts chapter 2, and it's not for us today. But I want to say to you, because of Pentecost, God's power is available to us. God wants you to know his power is for you and me. And we need, in this generation, to be a people filled with the power of God. Acts 1 8 says, You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. We have power to stand in the midst of a wicked and a perverse world. Amen? We have power to proclaim the good news that Jesus Christ saves, He heals, and He delivers. You see, that word power means strength and ability. So God gives every believer, when you receive the Holy Spirit, the strength and the ability, the power to be who God's called you to be. Did you know that you're all born with destiny and purpose? There's a call of God in all of our lives. And a lot of us don't know what is my call. I know I'm born into this world, but there's something empty inside. I'm seeking and searching for something, and I don't really know what it is. And I'll tell you what you're seeking for is you're seeking for the Lord. We need God in our lives. Amen? Now the Holy Spirit gives us power, and the power is available to each and every one of us. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Now the Holy Spirit gives you power to witness. The Bible says, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is upon you, and you shall become witnesses. We need to witness. Why does God give us the Holy Spirit? We're celebrating today Pentecost. We need to realize that the Holy Spirit is given to you to be a light shining in a darkened world. Now, we know the mandate of God for this church when we had our watch night service was to be what? Sons and daughters. Sons and daughters. Shining like the sun. Shining like the sun in 2021. How many know we're sons and daughters of the Lord? And we need to shine like the sun. And there's no greater brilliancy than that of a soul winner. The soul winner shall shine as the stars in the heavens. Now, we need to reach the world. This world is lost. Everywhere I go, I see people bound with fear. God's not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power. Come on. Power, strength, and ability to be what God wants us to be. Say amen. Amen. And we need to tell the world in this generation, and we have the power to do it. Don't say, I can't be a witness. I don't know what to say. I'll tell you what to say. Share with people what God's done for you. Yeah. That's where you start. Yeah. What has God done for you? Tell people about it. The Holy, gift, the Holy Spirit gives us power, and the Holy Spirit's what makes a difference in our lives. People say, how come you're so bold? Well, I'm not bold. I did a, I did a, a test. You know, they, they, when you go to companies and work for companies, they, they want to put you in the right place in that company, and they'll say what you're gifted for, you know. And uh, they'll start with, first of all, are you an extrovert or an introvert? Because that's 50-50, and they'll know where to put you and assign you in, in the company. And uh, all the tests that I took, I'm an introvert. And everybody says, you've got to be kidding. I said, no. But that's what the Holy Spirit can do, right? Now, my mother was an extrovert. I was an introvert. But that, that, that doesn't mean anything in the eyes of God, because when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he can make all of us extroverts, outgoing, powerful witnesses to share everything that we want to share with people. Amen? Amen. So the Holy Spirit's what makes a difference. We have the power of the Holy Spirit to witness. God's given us the power of the Holy Spirit for us to be transformed. In Acts 2, 3 to 4, it says, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues of fire. It sat upon every one of them as they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You see, the fire of the Holy Spirit fell on them. The difference with us is we ask for the Holy Spirit to come. He fills us with the Holy Spirit. He's given us power to witness. But 
what made the difference between their baptism and ours was they were not only baptized with the Holy Spirit, but they were baptized with fire. Now fire is testing and trial of our faith, that we might come forth as pure gold. And that was a transformation for them. Fire changes things. When anything's touched by fire, it's going to change. Amen? If paper's touched by fire, it'll burn up and turn to ash. Right? But when you are purifying gold, and you put the gold into a vat, and you turn the fire on, it transforms the gold to where it becomes precious. I remember a gold, a, a metallurgist saying to a young lady, she asked, she says, now the, the fire has to transform the rocks that have gold in it and the gold comes out and then you, you see it and you put it back in the pot. How do you know when the gold is pure? He said, it's easy. I know when gold is pure when I look into the fire and that and that gold bubbling, and it reflects my own image, then it's pure. You see, God's going to give us the baptism of fire, and he's going to put us through tests and trials in life. Where does it say in the Bible, when you receive God, you're trouble free? Would you please show me? <laughs> Come on. No way. The trying of our faith is more precious than gold. Right? Though it be tried in the fire seven times. So fire purifies, transforms, and God's going to put us through the fire so that we can understand the plan of God for our life more fully. And whatever he puts upon our life, we can bear it because he'll not put anything upon you that you cannot bear. Oh, I love it. He's going to transform me. Now he'll transform me if I'll, I'll allow him to. Those 120 in the upper room were transformed. The whole group was changed and the church was born. Think of it. Peter, the power of Pentecost, the Spirit fell upon him. He gets up and he walks out into the streets where all these people, hundreds and thousands of people, were celebrating the feast of harvest. And he gets up and he begins to say, listen, all the different languages of the earth, you have heard God speak to you. And these men and women that were in the upper room are not drunk, but they're filled with the Holy Spirit. And he begins to preach his first sermon under the power of the Holy Spirit. And he has 3,000 converts. Wow! I would like to preach a sermon like that. Where's the 3,000, Lord? <laughs> Come on. Second sermon, 2,000. Two sermons he preaches. You tell me Peter wasn't transformed? This is the guy that denied Christ three times. Hello. God forgave him, filled him with the Holy Spirit, and he is a bold one. Peter preaching the gospel of the kingdom and preaching to the world that God can change your life as he changed my life. It takes the fire of God's Holy Spirit to bring change in your life. Now, Pentecost Sunday, we're celebrating what the power of the Holy Ghost can do for you. Some of you say, God, change me, God, change me. And he puts you in the fire. And you're going, time out. I didn't think you meant that. I mean, no, he's going to change everything about us. But he's going to change us till we reflect his image. How many want to reflect his image? See, it's not about us. I want people to look at me and see Jesus, not Kay. You see Kay, you're going to get really disappointed. <laughs> but I want to tell you something. God's in the changing business. God can transform you. God can change your life. And he'll do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit gives us power to be touched by the presence of God. The presence of the Lord came upon them. The Bible says it sat upon every one of them. Tongues of fire came and rested on each one of them. When Moses dedicated the tabernacle in the wilderness, one to three million people came out of Egyptian bondage, and they were going to a Canaan land. And from Egypt to Canaan land, God said, you're going to build me a church. Moses, you're going to build me a church. And God gave the diagram and the plan of building that church 
called the tabernacle. And in the tabernacle, there was an altar, the altar of sacrifice. And that altar of sacrifice was built by the dimensions and the plan of God. And when it was built, the Bible says fire came down from heaven and consumed that sacrifice. They didn't light a match. They didn't have matches. So where did that original fire come? But from God Almighty. God loves us to sacrifice to him. Hello? And when we sacrifice to God, the fire consumes the sacrifice. And they were to keep the fire burning. And as that fire consumed the sacrifice, God's fire needs to consume us and transform us. And we need the touch of the presence of God because it's the presence of God that brought the fire. Solomon dedicated the temple and as he dedicated his temple, the Bible says fire came down from heaven, consumed the sacrifice, the presence of God filled Solomon's temple. The priest couldn't even minister. The glory of God filled the temple. Church, we need the glory of God. We need to be saturated with his presence. As the presence of God fell on those sacrifices supernaturally, God wants to fall upon you and touch you with his presence supernaturally. God accepted the church in the wilderness. He accepted the tabernacle as his dwelling place. But God wants to dwell in you. The Bible says you're the temple of the living God. When Jesus lives in you, he lives in you. But you see, not only can Jesus live inside of you, you need the Holy Spirit. Amen? You see, Jesus lives in your soul. The Holy Spirit lives in your soul. The Bible tells us we have two bodies. We have a natural body, we have a spiritual body. The spiritual body is where God dwells. The spiritual body is where the Holy Spirit dwells. God's concerned about your spiritual body, not your physical. And yet we spend billions of dollars on our physical body. Come on. Eating certain foods. Getting a facelift, the tummy tuck. I don't know what you get. <laughs> Hair color. Dental work. Botox. Why do people spend money on the outward adornment when it doesn't mean anything? God looks on the heart. Yeah. Now, mind you, I would like to look good. But I'm not going to sell my soul for my body and looking good. I sold my soul the day I gave it to Jesus Christ. And that's what's eternal, that's what's everlasting, and that's what's important. And being the temple of God, he wants to fill his presence with us. He wants to touch you. Just as the fire in the ta tabernacle uh, was uh, built and given by God, and then it filled the Holy Spirit, filled that place, we need God's Holy Spirit to fill this place. Amen. Amen. And we've got to build and maintain such a relationship with God that His Spirit not only rests upon you today, but it's on you every day. Come on, He'll never leave you, He'll never forsake you. We need to have the Holy Spirit on us every day. Amen. And when we saw healing Sunday and the Holy Spirit touching people is beautiful, but we got to keep that Spirit on us. Yes. Amen? Yes. Do you remember when you were filled with the Holy Spirit? Do you remember when God gave you a heavenly language? Yes. The Bible says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God. And how being in the Spirit, He speaks mysteries. When God gives you that heavenly language, it says it builds you up in the most holy way. Paul the Apostle said, I thank God I speak in tongues more than you all. Sometimes I think Paul the Apostle was a hick. Maybe from Texas. He said, I speak in tongues more than you all. You all, I speak in tongues. I want to say to you, we need to speak in tongues. It builds you up. It strengthens you. It, it provokes the presence of God. Amen? And church, we need a fresh touch of his presence. I don't know about you, but when Ray Ray sang that song this morning, the Holy Spirit just filled this place. Yes. Thank God I'm forgiven. Amen? Yes. I've been washed in his blood. That's a powerful song. 
That second verse talks about I have been in prison. How many know we're all in prison houses? But thank God that Jesus takes that prison house and breaks those doors open and sets you free. We need a fresh touch of the presence of God. We need to be transformed. Church, we need to be a witness for God. For the harvest is ripe. The world needs Jesus Christ. And because of Pentecost, we have the ability to reach out to the lost and give them something that's eternal, something they've never experienced before. They need a touch from the presence of God. Church, Pentecost Sunday, don't ever forget what God has given you, the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, God is three and yet he's one. He's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we thank God that God created it for us. We thank God for Jesus who saves and delivers us. And we thank God for the Christ, the Anointed One, that fills us with his power and transforms our lives and causes us to know and experience the presence of the living God like never before. Can we bow our heads? Heavenly Father, we thank you for coming to us. We thank you for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. We thank you that you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. There are so many people, Lord, that have Jesus in their hearts, but they've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, today is a day where we celebrate the outpouring of the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that gives us power to witness and share our faith and make a difference to this world. And Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit can bring such a change in our lives that when people look at us, they'll say, what has changed your life? And we can say, I've been transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, you want to give us a fresh touch of your presence today. And I pray now, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will just come upon everybody here today, that they'll sense your mighty presence. We need your presence, Lord. We need the touch that only you can give. We need to be transformed, Lord, into your image. It's from glory to glory, from experience to experience. We need to witness and reach the harvest in our generation. So stir and challenge every one of us today, Lord, that we can be your hand extended, reaching out to those that are oppressed, that they too can know Jesus. And Lord, I thank you for every family and person here this morning. Bless them, Lord. Meet their every need. For I ask this in the name of every name. In Jesus. Amen. God bless you.